Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm Dr. Anwar Hazmi, a local dentist and a part-time PhD student doing the uh, facial growth. So, uh, when I was trying to put things for this presentation today, I used to do it with a resident, but for the, this is the first time I, I do it with a DMG student. So, I need your feedback if you feel like uh, it's too much or too complex. And I, if, whenever you feel that there's something not understood, I mean, you didn't understand, just talk in and ask. Uh, today we'll talk about the concepts, which is the main concepts for the coming three or five lectures, I think, of the training facial growth. We know the maxilla grow different than the mandible, the mandible grow different than the PMJ, the cranial base, the cranial valve, so every one of them grow different, the way how we see it. But the concept of their growth are the same. The, 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 the biology behind it is the same. And today we're going to cover this area and also we're going to tackle some, some main things in, in this field and uh, hopefully it will, it will uh, shed some light uh, toward what you're going to see from uh, Dr. Hans maybe in the next seminar or uh, and also Dr. Latimer and me myself when I think I'll come back with you doing the cranial base. So we'll start with this. Usually we hear growth and development together. So it's like it's not the same. When we say growth, it, we refer to the uh, increase in size, and it's linked more to the change in morphology. It's anatomy. So if something growing, that means getting bigger size. We're talking about anatomy. We're talking about morphology. But when we say development, it refers to an increase in degree of organization and complexity. Uh, to make it like uh, together, if I ask you what's the difference between the growth and development, growth is anatomy, uh, development is more physiology. Uh, growth is quantitative, I mean, something you would measure, but the, the development is not. And also, they go together, they go, I mean, we know that growth and development, they are growth like hands in hands, and, uh, and with someone growing, he is also developing. Uh, this is the, the concept, but today we're not, since as we said, we're talking about the anatomy, anatomical phenomena, so we'll keep focusing on the growth, not on the development, because usually it's behavior and something beyond the concept, I mean the, the scope of this lecture. <coughs> so, what's the nature of scheduled growth? Uh, this is a two or three terms here you want to hear. Um, uh, it's a, for anything in the body, how they grow. It's not only the skeleton growth, it's for soft tissue, for hard tissue. Uh, on the cellular level, you see there are three basic mechanisms by which the growth uh, take place. First one, hypertrophy, which means increasing size of cells. I know all of you know that by this level. Hyperplasia, it's a number of cells. And finally, the extracellular matrix secretion. These three mechanisms or natures of the growth on, on a cellular level, it's having whether it's hard tissue, soft tissue. The difference or the question is which one is taking more place and which one is not happening in that tissue or that organ. Back to the skill of growth, we'll uh, talk about the soft tissue by itself. So when you talk about soft tissue, it's primarily by hyperplasia and hypertrophy. So these two things result in what we know interstitial growth. And the interstitial growth is a combination of, as I said, hyperplasia and hypertrophy, and happens everywhere. So if you think about any organ, any soft tissue, let's say muscles, they grow as a one piece and expand from all points. Go ahead. Can you explain a little bit more about the extracellular matrix section? The, okay, when, I, when you talk about the heart tissue, maybe going to clarify some of the definition of that. So it's, I mean, from the term itself, it's outside the cell. And this material is lighter, I mean, like kind of building upon each other to expand in the size. I'll go over it whenever we, we need that. So for soft tissue, we don't have this as a primarily uh, growth uh, nature for the soft tissue. It's basically interstitial growth. And this is an important thing to know. When we talk about the cartilage, 
it had it could be soft tissue and hard tissue. If it's unclassified, we would treat cartilage as, as soft tissue. And whenever the classification starts, then the cartilage will be hard tissue. This is the only organ in the body who would I mean which would be like soft tissue and then hard tissue. In the hard tissue in heart, uh, like bone and teeth, the extracellular matrix get mineralized and because of that there's no interstitial growth. Which means when when that mineralization takes place, hyperplasia, hypertrophy and secretion of extracellular matrix become pos uh, possible only on the surface and not inside. So mean this you keep adding uh, the new layers of extracellular matrix with hyperplasia and hypertrophy and this coming from preostium which we call the deposition of bone and that's the key uh, difference between soft tissue and hard tissue. As I said in soft tissue it expands from everywhere. In hard tissue uh, you can think about like uh, <coughs> like a tube or something to get resorption from inside and a position from outside and here what we call the deposition of the bone. Sometimes it goes that like different deposition from inside and resorption uh, from outside. We'll, we'll go over that. So another, another two terms that we need to understand before we go to the main uh, concept is the growth side and center. What, uh, what's the difference between side and center from uh, craniofacial growth point of view is that the center is a location at which an independent and genetically controlled growth can occur. So uh, that which means it has a potential to grow in, uh, on its own by itself and it cannot be influenced by environmental circumstances. An example of that is the synchondrosis, if you see, I mean uh, the cranial base here and also the, uh, the nasal septum is one of the uh, growth centers or claimed to be and also the epiphysis of the bone. On the other side is the growth site, at which the location of the, uh, of the growth occurs. But the difference is we can manipulate it. We, we can change growth because it, it got adapt to the, the environmental changes. And also, this is a key difference between the site and the center. Each center is a site, but not the vice versa. So, uh, and we'll go over this, uh, looking for the examples here, the sutures, either the circumaxillary suture or cranial suture is a site, uh, maxillary diversity also is an example of a site, and mandibular condyle is another example of a site. Uh, from a clinical point of view, what, we, what does that mean? If we say, let me put an example here. Headgear and face mask. Anyone here had headgear before? Show of hands. No one? Okay. You had headgear and you had headgear. So, do you remember how long you had? I mean, per day, how many hours? Um, I think I just wore it at night time. Night time? Mm -hmm. Say like 10 hours? 9 hours? Okay. Yeah. What are we doing here with headgear? Who else had headgear? Uh, okay, how? Oh, you, you had it? No? No, it wasn't good. <laughs> Which one? What's, what's the other one? Oh, that's face mask. You had it? I'm not sure which one was You don't know which one you had? Yeah. Okay, that's when you didn't use it. So, <laughs> uh, let's, I mean, uh, whenever you, especially the face mask, whenever you use it, because for my patient, I don't use it then that often because with face mask they have dif uh, difficulty sleeping with it. They don't like, you know, as a kid they roll over the bed, but with that they can't do it, so they just take it out. With headgear, it's, it has more compliance uh, records. What we're doing with headgear or uh, with a face mask, we are trying to manipulate or change the pressure on the suture, like here, the circumaxillary sutures or with the headgear uh, in the maxillary suture or maybe in a class 3 patient we're trying to push the condyle back kind of restricting the growth 
And if you remember from this slide, we said suture and condyle is the site. So that's why we're targeting this for treatment because we know for a center you never you would never change it. And uh, that's what that's what we mean by cannot be influenced by environmental changes. But here we could do some changes uh, with the with the site. So there is <coughs> many theories for which is the main base maker for the craniofacial growth. And uh, out of this slide, there's a lot of theories. Three of them is the famous one. We'll go over it uh, very quickly and uh, see which one we are using now or which one we do believe is the, is the, are the, uh, the main theories that uh, contribute to the craniofacial growth. First one was introduced by Sitcher. Basically what he said, bone growth, uh, bone growth within craniofacial unit is the result of growth taking place in suture. So whenever suture, I mean a uh, change, the bone will grow. If there's no change in the suture, like cranial suture here, or the circumaxillary suture here, there would be no growth. But as we said before, as we discussed it, uh, there are sides. In this theory, each theory tried to say which one is the center. So Sitcher uh, claimed that suture are centers, which means they are genetically independent. But it was found false when suture area from cranium were cut out and placed in abdomen and animal study, of course, they didn't grow anymore. So that means it doesn't grow by itself. And if suture are pulled apart, as we uh, see in uh, face mask example or headgear, the growth will increase or slow, which means this react as uh, react and their shape and size is not genetically programmed, which makes them sides. Whenever they are sides, so they are not the center, which which the each theory trying to say uh, this organ or this. Uh, uh, this is a side or center. So in Sitcher theory, we know it's not uh, a solid and it's not, uh, we, we already know it's not uh, true. The other one is a theory by Scott. What he said, he said cartilage is primarily determined of skeletal growth while bone respond uh, secondarily and passively. Transplanted phenoxybital synchondrosis did grow, but not very well. In another animal study, animal study they, they did uh, harvest the nasal septum, and sometimes it grows and sometimes it did not. The, and this is my personal opinion when I went over this study. What, why I think when synchondrosis grow, and sometimes it didn't grow because not that part is not center just because the surgical procedure when you cut that organ and you take it away and you put it somewhere else sometimes you the surgical procedure you have scarring tissues would not make it grow not because it's not growing by itself but just because there's other variables here we have to control it that's why whenever it grow by itself it makes some it means something and sometimes it didn't grow so oh, just so this is like a bone transplant from one patient to the other? And no, 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 this whole animal study. You, I mean, uh, for example, the, the nasal septum, they, they, they did another study. They have like two groups, like um, many pigs, and uh, they harvest the nasal septum from one, and they keep another nasal septum, and they follow up with them to see how their mid-face grow. And they found that the one they harvested the, mid, uh, the nasal septum, their mid-face never grow after they harvest it. And uh, they did the opposite sometimes. They take the organ and put it in a, in a place like just to get the blood supply and uh, innervation and then keep watch it and see if there's any change in the size of that organ. So by this animal study, because you know, there's one patient, I uh, went over the literature and there's a picture of a patient who had a car accident when he was or I think he fell uh, from his bicycle when he was six or something, and his, his nasal septum had been like uh, excavated, and he ended up having mid-face deficiency for the rest of his life. So this kind of uh, cases support the Scott theory that the cartilage 
is not a side, which means is a center that it has to grow to see that changes in the mid phase. Uh, since we have only the cranial base synchondrosis and the nasal septum cartilage, the, the, the type one cartilage that grows so, and the risk of the of the cranial uh, the cranial facial is uh, intermembranous. So we don't have cartilage everywhere. So these are the two places that you would see this kind of studies uh, try to support. So we we have the third one. So the, the conclusion of Scott theory that it has some innate uh, potential to, to grow on uh, its own. The third theory, which is the up to date one, uh, functional matrix theory. It's been introduced by Moss. Uh, actually, he had many versions of his theory. He kept changing it from 60s to late or early 70s. Uh, but the concept is a little bit difficult to explain it. What he's basically saying that bone never grows on its own. Soft tissue grow, and because of soft tissue growth, the bone followed. He taken up any credit from uh, cartilage or bone to grow by itself. It's only the soft tissue that grows, and the bone follow after soft tissue growth. And it seems this what what we do believe uh, more among the old theories with some credit for the uh, cartilaginous or Scott theory. So the good example is, I mean, they, they, all, they know it's like the cranial vault growing around the brain. Uh, what he's saying, or what they believe in this theory, that we, our head grow because our brain grow. It's not vice versa. So if someone who has small head, that's mean he has small brain. And the, the pressure coming from the, from the brain as a soft tissue it initiate the enlargement of the skull. Same thing for the eye. They have another animal study for that, and they harvest one eye from the animal, and then they found that after like a time, after like a couple months, they said like, you see, one eye is growing normally. I mean, I'm talking about the bone, but the other eye is not didn't grow because there's no eye. So this support the theory that. All the, all the growth in, in the cranial facial area is following the soft tissue. Also, the demand is a part of his theory that maxillary sinus is responding to oxygen demands, so whenever we need more oxygen, we, we have this kind of uh, uh, growth or uh, reshaping in, in, in maxillary sinus. So these three theories, as I said, uh, the truth is somewhere between the second and third. It's more uh, toward the third one, at least at these days. But the second one has some credit. And uh, I, I do believe, it's, since it's part of my research, so I, I'm leaning toward more credit to the second one as well. So we'll see. OK. Any questions so far? So we know what's, what is the site, what is the center. We know the three th uh, theories, suture theory, cartilage theory, and soft tissue. And uh, before I go to the next section, just uh, to remind you, I'm sure you all know this by now, that whenever we have new, uh, one, one side having uh, adding bone, the other side is absorption, just to keep it at the same, or at least maintain the shape, I mean maintain the, the size, otherwise you end up with the huge bone if you just keep adding up from one side. And that's why you have what you call resorptive and uh, depository or uh, deposition fields. It's not only it's not a case that every time the outside is deposited and the inside is uh, resorption. Sometimes, actually, many times you see almost half and half uh, distribution. So you, you see the mandible here, the black arrows here. That's mean resorption, which means going inside, and the white one is. Uh, uh, deposition, which means it goes outside. So, as I said, it's almost half and half. Sometimes you see you see the, the white from outside. Sometimes some you see it from inside. And this uh, mosaic kind of pattern of growth, wh which make it a little bit difficult to understand it, unless you go over it and try to analyze it one by one. That's why uh, after this lecture, you will have. Uh, 
one lift shock to explain the auxiliary growth and one for the mandible to explain how you would understand the growth of the mandible itself in terms of like which area is resorption and which area is deposition. So if a, in a given crystal area has a resorptive type of field, the opposite side is uh, deposit, as we said, and, and vice versa. So you see here, this is resorption, and this is deposition here. And in same, this is inside, this is deposition, and also if it is inside resorption, so each one by itself has two sides. It doesn't matter which one inside and which one outside. But let's talk about other concepts now, which is very important before we go to explain uh, further more about the, the remodeling of the, uh, of the bone. So it can be defined as the process of reshaping and resizing that each level within growing bone. Uh, it cannot simply grow by new addition, as we said. And uh, it's not possible. Uh, it's not possible for the bones to uh, have a complex morphology as the mandible or maxilla to increase in size by deposition of new bone and outside surface and also resorption from all inside. So what's going on? I mean, what's happening basically? It's different position of resorption and uh, deposition, which would we call remodeling. Back to this picture, if we kept having resorption here and deposition here, and also resorption here and deposition here, what would happen? Any? Stay the same side, just move. Say it again? It would just move, it would shift, yeah. Right, so the bone would move to that side. And this is what we call, uh, introduce us to movement of the growth. And uh, this, this type of movement we call drifting. We have two types of movement, displacement and drifting. Some textbook uh, say different terminology. Re uh, relocation is another name for drifting. And translation is another name for displacement. So back to the, to the movement that you said, uh, the drift. Drift is a sequential movement of a component uh, of component parts as a bone enlarged by remodeling of its own uh, osteogenic tissue. So here's the mandible. We know the anterior border of the the ramus is resorption area, and the posterior one is deposition area. So after a time, this amount this resorption will move it backward, and this also will get to move backward again which would end up with increasing or growing uh, corpus of the mandible here, and this how at least this part of the mandible grow. It has some area in the maxilla and in the cranial base, but it's just an example of drifting uh, movement of the mandible. Is it clear? Okay, so uh, now what's the drift direction? This is a, I like this diagram here, it shows you this is resorption, and this is deposition, and it's almost always the direction of the drifting is the same direction of deposition, because you would see different yeah. movement in, uh, in a couple of minutes. So don't don't I mean have uh, a uh, mix between drift and displacement. With drifting, whenever we have on deposition, that's mean we're moving that side. Another way to understand it, the, the surface that faces outward or toward the direction of movement is always depository. The opposite surface facing away is always direction. And it's, this is very important to understand because whenever you talk about the, man, the mandible, as you saw, it doesn't have like one pattern that this area is deposit of uh, resorption. So you need to, to think about it, how the mandible would, like for example, if you see cartoons that they sketching old lady or like with a big chin or it's like that's mean the lower border of the mandible keep adding and we know if okay if you think about it this way the bigger chin we have it's not the chin by itself keeping growing just the lower border is growing and just above that lower border above the symphysis is resorption otherwise your teeth will end up here 
it's just a chain growing. So when you look at look this picture or understand the growth pattern this way and try to remember it and try to diagram it, then you would, you, it would stick in your head that this is the way how it grows. So uh, another type we said there's drift and there is displacement. And this is a little bit confusing. I mean, I see a lot of confusion in here. So please let me know if it's not clear so we go back to drifting and displacement to explain it. Displacement is a physical movement of the whole, the bone itself is moving. It's not remodeling, the, the bone as one unit is moving. And what makes it move? During the displacement process, the whole, uh, the whole bone is carried by mechanical forces as, the, uh, as it's enlarged. Simultaneously enlarged. So, in displacement, we have primary and secondary. And uh, each one has different application in different. As I, as I said, whatever we say, mandible or mid face or maxilla, it doesn't mean this is the movement that happens in that part only. It happens in every part. And we just put example, uh, some examples, some picture to show you. But whenever you go go to a, to study at the mid face or the maxilla by itself, you would see drifting, displacement, primary, secondary for each part of the craniofacial. So displacement, this is the mid face here. It, we can uh, see with primary displacement, it provides space within which the bone uh, continues to enlarge. If you remember, uh, which, which theory that says <coughs> the, uh, the Again, we have the maxilla moving forward following the soft tissue and then little space will open up here and then we'll have bone formation in here. It's not the opposite. We don't have bone formation that push the maxilla down. Space comes first, following the face. Ma I mean the the functional ma uh, matrix theory, and then the bone will fill that gap. This 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 movement we call it primary displacement. Primary because we need the movement first, and then the bone deposit back there to keep growing. Go ahead. So in this case, is it only deposition occurring? Like no. Good question. It's Again, if you the the fact we're talking about two types in the same same area, that here why we see the some confu uh, some confusion. Here we have deposition in the outside of the maxilla, and also deposition and outside of the cranial base. From inside of the cranial base, there is a resorption, and from inside of nasomaxillary complex there is resorption, which means when you see uh, someone who's like uh, 15 years old or 12 years old and someone who's the same person at uh, 25 age, you would see his maxillary, I mean his sinus is getting bigger and his uh, all like the maxilla getting bigger, the sinuses, maxillary sinus and, 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 and uh, the, the, uh, the whole structure is getting bigger but it's not by adding bone on one side, it's also by creating more space. You know how you said before, um, the direction of the deposition is always the same as the movement of the bone. But in this case, the direction of the deposition is actually opposite to the movement of the bone, right? Because the maxilla is pushing this way. Right, no, no, that's, that's a good question. That's why uh, I have another picture to show it. Uh, to answer your question, there's two movement here. If I ask you where is the direction of the growth, you would say upward and backward. If I ask you where is the direction of displacement, you would say forward and downward. So we're talking about two different things. Displacement, again, I know it's confusing, and, and that's why I, I would spend more time to explain it and show you the diagram uh, to differentiate between Drifting and displacement, and primary and secondary displacement. So I'll go over the, this uh, after the next slide, and we'll go back if we need. So the amount of this primary displacement exactly equals to the amount of the new bone that we formed here. 
And basically the picture that explains what you're saying. This, is, this guy is the displacement. Following the soft tissue, moving this direction. And these two poor guys trying to do the, the drift that we explained before. So you would end up having this direction for what we call bone deposition or bone growth, and this movement for displacement, for primary displacement. They always, almost always, in the opposite side. You see? It's opposite to the picture of the bone growth in the primary displacement. So although the remodeling and displacement are different processes, they always occur in the conjunction with one another where joints, suture, team, J chondrosis are involved. Whenever we have, like here, we have the same chondrosis here and the sutures, so you would see this kind of two things happening in the same place. So my question now, let's see. Uh, again, same question I, I, I asked before or I explained before. What's the direction of the growth in the mid phase? Upward and backward. Okay, what we call downward and, and upward and downward. Or upward and backward, right. What's the direction of displacement of mid phase? Downward. downward and forward. Which one comes first? The displacement or the drifting or the remodeling? And again, and this it's a little bit confusing, but this process, even though there is a movement, so that's why we call it relocation or drifting, uh, drifting. And at the same time, it's remodeling. Because we remodel the bone here by taking from one side and adding to the other side. So you will see that kind of exchange of terminology, relocation, drifting, remodeling, but you would never see displacement and drifting used at the same time. And since we have primary, there's a secondary. So let's see this, secondary. This is much easier and it's uh, common sense that the movement of the bone in uh, its soft tissue is not directly related to its own enlargement. So what does that mean? The maxilla is pushed forward and downward, not because it's growth, because of the cranial base has been growing. It's, so think about cranial base, had a primary displacement, that primary displacement in the cranial base pushed the maxilla, and that's where the, the secondary displacement comes from. Is it clear? Right. Let's see. So, uh, as any boon develops, uh, remodels, and become a primary displacement, this, this can have a domino effect. That's the growth change can be passed or passed on from region to region to produce secondary effect in areas quite distant. And this is the diagram here. It's straightforward as I said. The cranial base growth and the growth here for the cranial base is a primary displacement. And because of that, it pushed the, ma the maxilla downward and forward and result in movement in the same direction. So the difference between the, the primary and secondary that the displacement would move the same direction, not as we see here in the uh, primary, where it's like kind of opposite direction. There's resorption here, and, and there's a drifting here, and there is displacement in here. Any questions? Okay, so uh, this is the, as in, again, this is the basic concept that you would need for for, uh, for the rest of the class. There is a more complex one would come uh, when we talk about each, like with about maxilla, you would see something different. But these are the main thing you would hear: drifting, relocation, uh, displacement. So uh, we covered the uh, the growth concepts here, the movement and theories center side, heart tissue, soft tissue, and remodeling. And now, before I end the presentation, I'll go over it one by one to ask you and kind of have two-way communication. So anyone would say what's different 
What's the difference between center and side? Go ahead. Center can grow on its own. Which one? Center can grow okay. on its own. Another difference? Which one has more? Uh, which one has genetic component? Center. Okay. And uh, what's your modeling? Resorption and deposition. Sequential resorption and position, which results in usually you maintain the shape. And this is a something comes to my mind. What would happen if resorption is more than deposition? Think about the bone itself. Say it again? Bone loss. Bone loss. And uh, the opposite, if deposition is more than resorption, you're adding the mass of the bones. So they're not the same. Most of the family are not the same. When you talk about, when you see a six years old uh, kid, usually the amount of resorption and deposition is not as someone who is 15. At age of 13 to 15 for boys, this is the, the growth peak for the mandible, so you will see almost double of, of uh, deposition comparing to when he was at six. And uh, what's the difference between hard and soft tissue growth? Which, which one has interstitial growth? Soft, soft tissue. And, uh, Again, uh, cartilage is starting as soft tissue and then it goes back to heart tissue, or actually it turns to heart tissue. And finally, uh, drifting displacement <coughs> primary and secondary. Uh, direction of the growth with drifting is the same when we, uh, in the same movement, same size. So the maxilla would drift. The growth of the maxilla is backward upward, and displacement downward and forward. Displacement primary one is always opposite, and secondary one always like drifting the same direction. Can you explain drifting one more time? Sorry. Drifting? Yeah. Let's go back here. So this is displacement. So drifting is a sequential movement of component parts as the bone is bounded by the modeling of its own osteogenic tissue. Here's the ramus. For ramus, we know always the posterior border is resorption, the posterior border is deposition. When we have resorption, deposition, resorption, deposition, the, the ramus will go here. This type of movement is drifting. So it's the same as the like adding to the side. It's gonna Grow and the drifting is going to go in the same direction as it's right as depositing. Deposit. Right. Okay. Okay. Oh, what? Any questions? Go ahead. So, if you're, would you say drift is just um, so the next level of direction is just forward then? The what? If you're trying to like set a word to like the direction of growth for the next level for drift, the direction of drift, would that just be forward? Uh, no, because the, the way the maxilla grow, I mean, I, the, the, the nasal maxillary complex, it moves this way. So forward and, and downward. Same, this face, the nasal the same direction. This face? Right. Displacement. Displacement? Okay, let me take it back. Growth is <coughs> in the maxilla. Where are we adding bone? up and the back, right? You agree? Since we're adding bone in the back and up, then the growth is upward and backward. The displacement is where we see <coughs> the maxilla is moving. You understand? Yeah. It's a little bit confusing, right? Here. So we, since we're adding bone here, and the top and the back, so we call the growth direction is upward and backward. 
displacement, forward and downward. And then drift is just something displaced and they're just driving that? Is that? Drift? Actually, this is drifting. Because what's drifting? Drifting is adding load from one side, taking load from other side, which we're doing here at the top and the back border of the McDillon. So in this structure, we have drifting movement and displacement going at the same time. It's always, you would see this type of movement with the suture, TMJ, and synchrotron. And the best way to think about it, all balloons try to keep contacting each other. If you got confused any time with like suture joints, they, they, they would try to keep contacting each other, which means both ends is adding up, like here. The, the, base, the bottom of the cranial base is deposit and the top <laughs> and the back of the uh, mesobacterial complex is also depository. So they, they don't try, I mean, soft tissue taking them away and they say, no, no, we should go back by adding bone from each side. This happened only with joints, whereas the suture, TMJ, and control system. Okay, any questions? This is my email. Just yes, remember my email. And uh, I think Kohan said you said you sent him something. Or you, I, I I don't remember. He said you understand or you don't understand. He he sent you an email. Saying what? Something, something you know. Something, fact. You know, something you know? Something you know? Something you know? Oh, okay. That's easier. <laughs> 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 you gonna get like a yeah, how many? How many do you? Yeah.